first video in a big series all about mapping out and practicing melodic arpeggio guitar shapes. Each video in this series focuses on a different chord type so we can learn the five positions, the five melodic arpeggio guitar shapes of that chord type so we can target chord tones when we are improvising. This is essential vocabulary for jazz improvisation, certainly, but it also will level up any kind of soloing or lead guitar by being able to target the chord changes a little better. It's also just great technique practice. It's important for just music theory knowledge and clarity on the fretboard, and it's also great for composing melodies and targeting chord tones when we are writing over chord progressions. So in this video, we're gonna go over the five arpeggio guitar shapes of just the major triangle. Yeah, this is our starting point. We really want to know this and then we're going to get to more complex chords later in the series. I have a free download of all the diagrams from this whole series, just all the arpeggio guitar shapes, all the chord tone shapes for all of these chord types. You can download that for free just with the link in the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chord tones. There's also a link in the description to a playlist of all the videos in this series. <laughs> So in this video, I'm just gonna go through and play up and down each of the arpeggio guitar shapes for just the major triad, all off of C, just in the way that I want you to work on being able to do it, just playing up and down, uh, clean and in time through each of those shapes. Then I'm gonna go over the left hand fingerings that I recommend because that is the biggest stumbling block when we're, when we're working on these. What left hand fingers should we use when we're just kind of at least trying to get the vocabulary down? Then after that, I'm gonna just demonstrate improvising a little bit with each of the shapes, which is the next step that I recommend after just learning how to play them up and down. I love this stuff. It's going to be fun. Let's get into it. I'm Jared Borkowski from soundguitarlessons.com. On this channel, I teach on a wide variety of guitar and musicianship topics, all designed to help you gain more creative control over music so you can express yourself more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, I'm just going to demonstrate up and down each of these shapes as an example of what I want you to work towards and be able to do. Okay, so let's go back and talk about the fingering. I like to start on the lowest root, go all the way up, back down, go below that lowest root, and then land back where we started again, which is what I did with all of those shapes. Um, and in, the, in scale forms, I like to repeat every root that we come across with these chord tone forms. Often I'll just start on the lowest root and land back on that. Don't need to stop and repeat the other roots. So start with your second finger, then first, and then you wanna jump over to your second finger for the fifth of the chord here. Don't try to reach for it. That's gonna be really stressful on the hand, gonna cause tension, but just let yourself shift over to it. It's actually possible to do relatively legato, relatively connected, be super relaxed, okay? Because then when you're here, you have your fingers set up to go tip, 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 tip of all those fingers. Second finger, third, pinky, first. Back down, repeat with those same fingerings. And then at the end here, I like to go third finger, middle and then back up to the root again like that you can also go second 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 and roll that's called a roll where you use the same finger crossing strings like that but i kind of like that first option better let's go on to the second shape on the sheet this one's going to be just everything in strict fifth position that means our first fingers lined up with the fifth fret the whole time pinky third first 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 this is that roll so you can roll here or even kind of hop a little bit. Either one of those, what you don't want to do when you're doing melodic arpeggio work is to get it to ring. We're not doing harmonic arpeggios, right? If they ring over a little bit, fine. But you do want them to sound like, pretend it's a single note instrument, a voice that, notice how I'm really da da da, cutting them off. You, you can get them connected still, but you don't want them to be, you don't want to suddenly be having notes ring over when everything, you know, in some spots the notes are disconnected, some spots they're not. Well, we're playing some notes on the same two strings. So treat everything that way, even when you're crossing strings. How would it sound if that was all on one string, right? So you don't want them to ring over. So here's a roll right here, that's a finger roll. Pinky, 
roll. Okay, to roll, you have to be very much on the tip of your finger to roll above. And if you're gonna roll down, you have to be very much on the flat of your finger, not the tip. So you can roll down to the tip on the next one. So that means we have to roll down with this first finger here by being way on the side of the finger and then roll down. So we're, by this one, by this fourth string note, we're on the tip of the finger. Okay, you could also hop, but you're never gonna get it really as connected as you want it if you're just really hopping, but that's okay too. It's better than having them ring, okay? Third finger, and then pinky. Those are the fingerings for that second one. Okay, interesting here, if you listen to this, this next one, precisely the same notes in the same order. That's the power of what we want to have uh, with our fretboard clarity, that if you have a musical structure, musical kind of idea in your mind, or just, uh, even in your hands, you wanna be able to access that in multiple places on the guitar. So with this third shape on the sheet here, second finger, first finger, and then I want you to, don't reach over like before, but jump over third finger, and now everything is the tip of the finger until we do a, a finger roll on the top string there. So third, pinky, middle, first, roll, roll back, okay? And the roll, the whole point of it, is so we're not just barring and ringing like we don't wanna do. Middle, pinky, third, first. Again, let that shift over back to the middle, okay? Well, I said this already, but what's the advantage of doing this besides just kind of hearing it, playing it, technique, all that stuff? Well, when we're improvising, even when you're using scale or even chromatic notes or all kinds of things, we wanna know the actual anatomy of the chord as we're playing around it. So on a C major chord, Right, I can kind of land on home base notes anytime I want by knowing this shape or this shape so well. There's all kinds of scale notes around or even... I noticed what I did there. All these kind of like in-between notes, chromatic. If I know this shape so well, I know that that's the third of the shape and this is the root of the shape. And I land on this harmonically pleasing kind of uh, tonicized resolution because I know I'm back in like the home base notes that I can hang on for a while. This is actually why you can play any note over any chord and make it work because if you know where to go to resolve things, then you're golden. Two more shapes to show the fingerings of. Here's the lowest root in this next one. This, this is the shape that's neglected the most often because the root is on the fourth string. Third, uh, sorry, second finger on that fourth string there. Here's the third of the chord. Okay, we're gonna jump over from three to five of the chord, just like we did over here. Okay, root, third, fifth. Don't reach over like I'm, I'm showing you just to show you the distance there, but I don't want you to do that. I want you to actually hop over, okay? Now when you're here, you're gonna go pinky on the root and then third finger, pinky. So that's like set up as if you could play that chord, um, but you don't wanna play them ringing together, but it's kind of, it's that ergonomic, okay? Now from here, you're gonna roll so you gotta be a little bit flat on your finger, roll down to the tip, then pinky. Okay, that's that one, last one. This is all in 12th position. This is what we could call C form in the cage system, pinky. Third finger, first finger, second, first, pinky. Second or middle finger, first finger, Third finger, pinky, okay, roll down. One to five of the chord, one, five, three. Okay, one, five, three, and then back up. Again, this is so useful if you're playing. Right, you wanna know where to land if you're improvising, but at first we just have to be able to go up and down these. Okay, those are, all, those are all the fingerings. Once you can do that, I want you to just improvise with each one a little bit. Now with triads, later in this series, it's gonna be really fun. They're gonna sound cooler. They're gonna sound more like melodies, like something you actually wanna even use in your, in your playing. With the triads, very, very limiting feeling. That's okay. It's not supposed to sound 
even good yet. It's not supposed to sound like your amazing guitar solo yet. It's really more for just mapping out the clarity of things. And so should we be, we be able to have some ideas that sound good, that we like, that we feel good about? Yes, of course. And so our challenge is to stay limited to the three tones. It's gonna feel very limited, the one, three, and five of this chord, and try to make something that feels good. So we're improvising a lot with just playing the correct notes and playing with some phrasing and time and, and feel, do whatever we can. But the biggest idea here is just to, can we break it up? Can we be playful with it, with uh, these correct vocabulary notes? So I have a little loop here. Okay, and I'll just improvise in each position a little bit. Notice I kind of slide in and out of things. I consider that, you know, playing just this tone by sliding into it. improvising we're not sticking to those same fingerings the fingerings are just for up and down when you're improvising use anything you could use all first finger okay I'll switch over shape okay, so limiting but we want to see that we could jump to any of these anytime a good example of really trying to create some phrasing with it really make a musical idea with it let's go to this last one playing with some rhythm there kind of just going up and down get free with it get sloppy with it whatever you're just kind of really can i see these right also you can start doing some harmonic stuff because you're just improvising now okay so the biggest challenge is like is it going to sound good with triads well a lot of times not don't worry about that just worry about can i play with this can i be playful with this and improvise it with it do i know the notes that well can my hands jump to them that's what we're doing here and it should be fun kind of should feel like exploring and you can if you are really comfortable with them you can try to get some phrasing like the shape the fourth shape on the on the page here that i did kind of what would be called d form in cage system i really like the actual musical idea i did there but i'm not stressed about doing that with each of them i'm just kind of playing around, experimenting, trying to, again, get the shapes down more. That's what's going to be necessary when we do get them down that much, uh, so much that we can start working on it in real music, then we can think about uh, the musicality and the phrasing and stuff. If you want to take it a step further, of course, start adding other notes and scale notes and play around that uh, as well, but make sure you can do just chord tones at first. You can download my free melodic arpeggio chord tone vocabulary pack. It has all the diagrams from this lesson and all the lessons and chord types in this series. Just use the link in the top of the description. So question for you, what has held you back the most when trying to improvise over chord changes? It's a really hard thing to do, improvise over chord changes and kind of know where we are and address the changes appropriately and follow the harmony. So what has felt hard for you when and if you've tried to do that? That's kind of why I'm creating this series so we can get our vocabulary down and work towards that goal of just super knowing where we are whenever we're playing over chord changes and improvising. Hit that like button, please, if you liked this. I post a new lesson every week. Next week, we're continuing with this series and we're gonna do the same thing with the minor triad. All important stuff. Can't wait to see you there. Take care. Thanks for watching and happy practicing. Thank you.